Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to The Fragrant Bunker. Today we're going to talk about the top 10 Chanel perfumes for winter. So the top 10 winter perfumes from Chanel, or the top 10 that I consider to be the best to use in winter. Before we get to it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and you can also follow me on Patreon. Super Jacob, all spelled together on Patreon for extra perks and special videos that never hit YouTube. And a lot of them are perfume based, by the way. So go check check me out there. Uh, you won't be disappointed. I hope you won't. Well, give it a go and let me know. The first one for winter is Bois des Îles, the Eau de Parfum. But you can also do the Extrait. And if you can manage to hunt down the Eau de Toilette, go for the Eau de Toilette. But uh, the Eau de Parfum is a nice, warm, balanced version of Bois des Îles. The woodsy sandalwood note of these exotic forests uh, that Chanel with um, Ernest Beau envisioned in the 20s is just so beautiful. It has a certain type of, it's a visionary perfume for the 20s. And still today, when you smell it, especially in its fresher batches, where the aldehydes are a little bit more toned down, they, they get darker and more intense the older uh, the bottle is. But Especially in uh, in fresh batches, and this one is relatively fresh. It is seven four zero one, twenty twenty two. Um, it 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 gives you an idea of traveling to distant places in warm climates while you are in the midst of winter. Uh, it's a very very beautiful vision. So it's a great great winter fragrance, Bois des Îles. Now the second one is Zesty and has a heck of a character. Uh, also, there's a spark in it, there's a fire in it, hence why it's warmer also for winter. But then it also has a coolness about it and a de detached attitude about itself. And that would be Misia by Chanel. Now, I do have the Eau de Toilette. I'm not a big fan of the Eau de Parfum. Uh, gotta, gotta be honest here. The Eau de Toilette is where it's at for me. And... Uh, the violet and the raspberries. It's a very particular fragrance. You know, the violet here is really st strong and kind of cuts through you. <clears throat> it's a very, very character heavy fragrance, just like Misia was, you know, Chanel's biggest frenemy. They were friends, but also enemies. And it has a heft to it. It's very powdery. There's also iris orris root in there. It's a very, very powdery, sharp, violet accord. But then there's that raspberry that kind of makes it more sweet and soft later on throughout the lifespan of this fragrance on the skin. And it does warm up the, the longer it stays on the skin, meaning um, this untamed lioness type of character in the opening becomes a very, very docile and sweet kitten towards the end still ready at any at any second to show its you know fangs and claws and whatever you want uh but it kind of adapts to your own skin and you you become one with misia this is for the other toilet the other parfum remains screechy throughout so if you can't get your hands on an eau de toilette, I highly recommend really beautiful in winter because it it let it allows you to focus it gives you a sense of perspective, I feel, uh, which is much needed in winter because I usually just tend to cocoon myself and be in bed most of the time and just like be kind of like a bear in my winter sleep. And Misia helps me shake that a little bit out of my system and also, you know, do get some mental thinking done, some creative work. Misia was super creative. She was also a muse for many artists, whether they be painters or musicians. And so this perfume is a sort of a muse to me as well. When I wear it, I get inspired. So it's a beautiful, beautiful perfume. Nothing better than having an inspiration and a creative moment, zesty moment in the middle of winter. So Misia is perfection for winter. Now the next one, interesting because, you know, if Bois des Îles happens to be a little bit outside of your budget because it is pricey and you want um, a slightly softer version of Bois des Îles, well, then you get its little you could call it a little son or a little daughter. You get egoist. Now, I do have the older formulation, which is in the older bottles, but with that plastic uh, lid that uh, has uh, the etched in wood pattern. So they're kind of 
selling it to us as if it were a black wood, bois noir, and in fact, Egoist used to be called black wood when it was first released, before Egoist, before it was rebranded Egoist and then released worldwide. Now, Egoist, the story of Egoist is that um, the bad time has told Jacques Paul, hey, could you make a perfume for us uh, that is, you know, in the, on the masculine side? Now, obviously, I say all perfumes are unisex. They don't know gender. But, you know, how some men are, they need to have their validation that they're allowed to use perfume. Otherwise, they're sissies. So anyway, uh, but as Vivian would say, it's all unisex, baby. Vivian Westwood here with her unisex uh, square shirt. Anyway, so Egoist became... So the, the bad time has told Jacques, you know, give us a, a kind of a masculine version of Bois des Îles that we can wear. And that's how Bois, Bois Noir was created, like kind of as a flanker to Bois des Îles. But then when the name changed to Egoist, it was launched worldwide. You know, it's a perfume in its own right. Officially, Chanel does not claim that this one is a flanker to Bois des Îles, but it is a version of Bois des Îles. Again, you have your sandalwood in here. And you're kind of almost like cinnamony accords. I... Love to wear this one during holiday season, especially, you know, like Christmas time, if you're into that type of stuff, or New Year's Eve, um, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, whatever. This is a very festive fragrance, beautiful in cold weather, and more affordable than Bois des Îles. Bois des Îles has more precious woods. I mean, you smell, Bois des Îles smells more expensive. Egoist is a little bit more, you know, mass product, but it's really, really beautiful. Did not do very well in the States, so you can barely ever find it in America, but it's still available, widely available, widely available in uh, France and most countries in Europe. And it has, it's a little bit less warm than Bois des Îles, but it has a beautiful balance to it, so it's great in winter. Now, the next one. Uh, this particular concentration is great for winter. Not all the concentrations, but the one I'm going to show you now is great for winter. So my number four is Cuir de Russie, Extrait, or the Parfum. It's the same thing. They're just two different names to, to define the same concentration. So uh, Cuir de Russie, uh, Extrait, is sublime in the middle of winter. There's just a certain level of warmth inside of this concentration that really hits the spot in winter. I do prefer other concentrations for other seasons. I love Cuir de Russie. I love it all year round. But in winter, it's the extrait that, that hits the spot for me, and it hits it just right. It's kind of like a roll in the hay in a barn that's been warmed up somehow so you're never really cold in that hay if you know what i mean now just saying now speaking of hay uh we're going to move into the number five uh which is le lion de chanel in the eau de parfum concentration well it only exists as of now in eau de parfum uh, <coughs> concentration another roll in the hay however i love this one in summer as well by the way but hmm. A beautiful, beautiful labdanum in here. It is just... And then the incense at the base, you know, the labdanum lives throughout the entire lifespan of this perfume on your skin. And then that incense, churchy, incense vibe kicks in towards the end. This thing is... This is... A beautiful perfume. Dare I say, Olivier Polge's best for Chanel thus far. I really love Paris Paris by Olivier Polge, and I also love his Deauville. I love Gabriel Essence, uh, Gabriel Extrait, not Essence. Uh, I love his Sycamore Extrait, but those are all, you know, Sycamore Extrait is a flank, is, um, is another concentration, not a flanker. It's a concentration of actually Sycamore that his father had made, so it's not really Olivier's perfume. But Le Lion de Chanel is Olivier's perfume. So... Well, Gabriel is as well, but I'm not a fan of the first Gabriel, the Eau de Parfum, not a fan of it. But this thing, I think he really, I think this is the best one he's done so far for Chanel. Um, some people might say 1957 is his best, but to me, probably this one. But it does compete with Paris Paris and Deauville. 
but this one is a masterpiece of a perfume. Uh, it is warm, obviously. It is zesty. The labdanum is a particular ingredient. That oily, resinous consistency of labdanum is very highly concentrated here, uh, which does not happen often in many perfumes, especially in perfumes that have that are deemed Byzantine and ambery. You know, we're not supposed to say Oriental anymore, but that's the idea. And this one does not play into what other brands play into, you know, the ouds. Ouds have been popular for a decade now, I want to say, already. Do you guys remember uh, Christian Dior's Collection Privé, um, Oud Ispahan, which was released in 2012? That's been 10 years now. Uh, that, that was kind of, you know, a very particular type of rose and oud smell. And oud has been around for a while, but Chanel never wanted to go into the oud direction. They never really fell for the trend. And I respect Chanel a lot for that. And when they created their version of a, in fact, this one was first released in the Middle East and then later in Europe. So this was kind of targeted to the Middle Eastern um, audience and clientele. Uh, but, e but even still, Chanel still did not go the oud route. They were like, no, we're not going to do it. But they went the labdanum route. And the labdanum in here is one of the best I've ever smelled. It is just divine. It's kind of like one of those creams that when you first, when you take it out of the tin or the jar, it's very compact and you got to kind of, you know, like warm it up between your hands to melt it a little bit with the heat of your hand and then you apply it. Similar to this perfume, what I mean by this is when you first spray it on, it kind of stings. Not the skin, but the smell of it. But then you need to wait till the body really heats it up and starts melting it, you know? Then it becomes that gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous perfume. Uh, that's why in summer I love to wear it a lot because of the heat. In summer I get to that point of the perfume that I love so much sooner. In winter it takes longer, you know? It takes you like, let's say, 40, 50 minutes more time before you get to that point where Le Lyon is really, you just, it's breathtakingly beautiful. But nevertheless, beauty in winter and uh, it's a cozy perfume. You know, this one is also a great one to, you know, share with someone you, you like, you know, it's a little cuddle moment as well. Really, really good for that. So that was number five. Number six is another extrait. And uh, this one, particularly important to note, in winter, extra, not the other concentrations. And that would be Jersey by Chanel. I know I say in my videos that um, Francis Kurjan is the, the, the master of lavenders. He does lavender like nobody else. Um, however, Francis Kurjan did not do any Chanel perfumes. However, Jersey is a lavender-based perfume. And in particular, in the extrait concentration, the lavender is of the highest quality. It almost has an oily consistency. When you apply this to the skin, it, 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 it literally shines. It's like oily. Uh, and the lavender in here, it, it, it's the lavender from Grasse, and it has a purity to it that you don't really smell anywhere else. It is so majestic, so pure, so soft, delicate, but intense at the same time. And yes, if lavender is done right, some people associate lavender to a type of minty behavioral pattern. Like if you would put mint on your skin, it does have a cooling effect, almost like tiger balm, less than tiger balm, but in that direction. And some people say that lavender also has a minty quality to it. Not this lavender. This lavender doesn't give you that sensation of coolness, but it rather heats you up. It's a warm lavender. When you apply this one in the extrait concentration, you feel as if the rays of light from grass in the middle of summer are warming your skin and your skin is glistening with, with the oil that's in this thing. Uh, that's the type of lavender effect it gives me. And this is also why I love this one in winter because it makes me feel like even though it's so cold outside, I feel like I'm still in the summery, beautiful, lazy, breezy heat somewhere in the south of France in Grasse. I can almost hear the bees humming by, you know, pollinating all the little lavender flowers. 
masterpiece jersey by Chanel Extrait for winter. So that was number, what was it? Five, six, I don't even, six, that was number six. Number seven, I don't have it. Number seven is Allure pour Homme. Now, I did have a full bottle, uh, and this is kind of a difficult perfume for me. I love it very much, Allure Homme, but it is one of those fragrances that while my father was alive, he bought me a bottle uh, on one of his travels. I didn't ask for him to buy me Allure Homme. He just did. Yeah, he, you know, he just surprised me with it. And I loved it very much. And I remember then when I uh, moved to a different place and I don't know, it, it was a strange situation, but long story short, I had like used half the bottle and then I went back home one time with the perfume and I noticed that he really enjoyed it a lot as well. And I left it there for him to use. I know it was a gift to me, but he was like so happy with it. And I was like, you know what, dad, why don't you use it? And so I, I find it really difficult for me to now that my father has passed away to repurchase that perfume. I don't know. I just have that memory of him with that bottle. And I kind of feel like I can't recapture the magic again if I buy it again. I'm not saying I'm never going to get it again, but I love it a lot. I love that perfume a lot, but I kind of, that perfume to me means memory of my dad. So I prefer that perfume in my memory rather than having it physically again. It's a bit complicated to explain, but that's kind of how it goes for me. However, it is a beautiful perfume in winter for those of you who do have it or who are thinking of purchasing it. I'm not talking about the flankers like Allure Homme Sport or Edition Blanche or all those editions that they... No, I'm talking about the OG first one released, right? The Eau de Toilette, Allure Homme, without any sport added to it or Edition anything added to it. It's a stable, solid, beautiful fragrance um, that is not overly warm, but it's also not cold. It's a very stable perfume. And I think stability is something we tend to forget in winter, you know, because you tend to overeat, you binge, you, you, you know, you grow a little bit more whatever on the sides of your body, you know. Um, your love handles are all over the place and stuff like that. But kind of a little um it smells of discipline in a weird way. And it's a smell that also helps you preserve some sort of routine and regimen in, in a direction of like kind of not letting yourself go too much, uh, which is a good thing in winter sometimes. So this is why I think Allure Homme Eau de Toilette is a good winter fragrance. All right. Now, moving on to number seven. No, eight. Seven. I don't know. Where are we now? Okay. So the next one is also a pure parfum. It's an extrait. And that would be Coromandel by Chanel. Now, truth be told, you could technically also do an Eau de Parfum or the Eau de Toilette if you hunt down Eau de Toilette. But Coromandel, of course, it's a patchouli bomb with white chocolate in there. There's a hint of vanilla. I mean, this is all about warmth and extreme Byzantine ambery accords. This thing is kind of the most intense of Chanel Les Exclusives fragrances. In fact, from the Les Exclusives of the 11 that were launched in 2006-2007, Coromandel Eau de Toilette was the first one I bought because it's just the first one that you notice because it's kind of a bully. It's the one that screams the most of all of them. It's the one you recognize and realize. Like, it's the one you acknowledge its presence first. And then the other ones come later because the other ones are more tame, like, you know, Bel Respiro, 28 La Pausa, or now just renamed La Pausa, or number 18, or Eau de Cologne. Like, those are the Les Exclusives you kind of tend to discover for yourself last, after you've went through all the others. But the first one you notice is Coromandel. Because it's so opulent and intense, this in immense amount of patchouli in there, and that white chocolate accord is just insane. Um, it, is a, it is a beauty. 
It is a beauty. It's not for everyone. But if you are into extremely hot fragrances, that smell of really, really expensive luxury, but warm and hot, Coromandel, hands down, this thing is, it has winter written all over it. I mean, you know, it's very clearly winter. It's a very, very clear winter fragrance. And the next one also very, very clear. So this is now number nine. Uh, number nine is um, really to be worn in winter. And I'm, and I'm actually going to show you this one right after Coromandel for a reason. Because Coromandel is the expensive version of Chanel Patchouli. Now, Chanel has another really patchouli heavy fragrance in their mass-released products. Uh, which is very heavy on the patchouli and beautiful in winter. And that would be Allure Sensuelle Eau de Parfum. They've discontinued the extrait. They used to have an extrait as well. But now they do Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum of Sensuelle, uh, Allure Sensuelle. Uh, Allure Sensuelle Eau de Parfum is the highest concentration you can buy as of now. Extremely heavy on the patchouli. That's why... I'm bringing it in right after Coromandel uh, because it, you, well, I don't want to say this smells like Coromandel. It does not. It's quite a different accord and it's a different take on patchouli as opposed uh, to Coromandel. And it's a little bit more affordable also as Coromandel, but also because you can buy smaller sizes of it. You know, a Lourdes Sensuel is available as a 35 mil bottle, while Coromandel, the smallest Eau de Parfum, you can buy 75 mil, very expensive. Uh, but Allure Sensuelle Eau de Parfum is available also as a 35 mil, which is coincidentally this bottle. I use it very sparingly because it is cloying to me. Um, I can only use it in winter. It's a beautifully poetic fragrance. It is warm. And, um, but weirdly, um, it's a wet patchouli, you know, it's not one of those cheap smelling patchoulis that we're used to, you know, those like patchouli oils you can buy anywhere, you know, that kind of hippie smell. If you know, you know what I mean. This is a more elaborate, sophisticated smell of patchouli. However, Coromandel is a whole other level, the quality of the patchouli in Coromandel. But the quality of the patchouli in Allure Sensuelo de Parfum is also amazing. And dare I say, it has a beautiful hot makeup-y accord. You know, it's almost like kind of like a hint of makeup in there as well, which I love. I love when a fragrance has a makeup accord. And uh, it's just warm. It's like a warm makeup embrace. It also makes you want to put on darker makeup, like dark red hues, a darker red lipstick, darker, you know, makeup around the eyes. It is a beauty in winter, not in summer. In summer, because of the patchouli, it can get quite cloying and sweaty smelling if you if you do it in, in the heat. And number 10, it would be no winter, and it would be no snow, and it would be no icy vibe if it wasn't for Chanel number 5. Extra, okay? We're talking about the extra. So yes, as you can see in winter, we have quite a few extraits going on in my selection because the extraits tend to be more warmer, more intimate, more close to the skin. You're spending more time at home. You're not going out. It's really cold outside. So you're kind of with yourself. You're dealing with yourself a lot. And these perfumes are very intimate because extraits tend to not project as much uh, as the other concentrations. So it's an intimate... Um, almost like a ritual that you do with yourself as you're at home and you want to smell wafts of it to warm your spirits up. That's why there's a lot of extraits in my selection for winter and Chanel. But Chanel number no. five, extrait, Ernest Beau has been uh, noted to have said that he wanted the smell of snow in a bottle. And when you know that and then you smell the extrait after you've heard that, you do smell out the snow. It, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's a masterpiece of a perfume. And I do have the spray version of the extra. I also have the splash version, but I love to use the spray because I get a little bit more of it. When you spray it on, it kind of, you know, when you dab it on as a splash bottle, you, it's very, 
it's a concentrated spot on your skin that gets the perfume on. But when you spray it out, it kind of covers more area. And I just love to smell it all over me. Chanel number no. five is a masterpiece. So to smell that snow, that Chanel-esque vision of cold, icy snow, well, of course it had to be the extrait of Chanel number no. five. And of course it had to be in winter. It's also a beautiful perfume to wear during the holiday season as well. So these are my top 10 Chanel fragrances for winter. I hope you've liked them. I hope you've liked this selection. Let me know your picks, your Chanel picks in winter in the comments down below. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Take care and subscribe.